The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. My brothers, my sisters, the reading from the Holy Gospel. Glory to God. Glory to you, Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath day, Jesus entered the synagogue and he taught. The people were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. In the synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? You have you come to destroy us. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of here. The unclean spirit convinced convulsed him, and with a loud voice came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's look at a couple of these readings. The first reading from Deuteronomy is the text that begins the whole tradition called the prophet. And it's Moses speaking. Now let me put this in a context. There's two great strains of spiritual teachers in Judaism. And I think if the truth is told in all religions, the priestly strain, they hold the system together. They keep repeating the tradition and I'm sort of operating as a priest now. Uh, the one that we're less familiar with is the prophetic strain because that one hasn't been quite as accepted. They are critical of the very system that the priests maintain. Now do you see if you have both you have a certain kind of wholeness or integrity. If you just have priest, priest, priest you just keep repeating the party line and everything is about loyalty and conformity and following the rules and that looks like religion. But if you have the priest and the prophet, you have the system constantly refining itself, correcting itself from within. Now that very seldom comes together. We see it in Moses himself who both gathers Israel yet is the most critical of his own people. We see it again in Jesus, who loves his people, but is lethally critical of hypocrisy and, and illusion and, and deceit. And we're living in a most amazing time because we have it in Pope Francis right now. We very seldom have a pope who is also a prophet. One who holds the, the tradition together, respects in that sense, conservative, conserving the tradition. But at the same time, I don't know if you listen to the things he's saying to the bishops and priests, and he's often quite critical of us, as he well should be. But of course, he's creating a lot of enemies in doing this. Now with that as a background, you're prepared, I think, a little more to understand the gospel. This is the first exorcism our recognizing of a demon, of dark spirit, and it's in a most amazing place. It's not in the marketplace, it's not the prostitutes, it's not the tax collectors. The devil is in the synagogue itself. This is no small symbol. It'd be like if I said, well, the big devil in the South Valley is right in Holy Family Parish. I, I don't think you'd like that, right? That's the things that prophets say. So Jesus enters the synagogue, first chapter of Mark's gospel, and the evil ones, of course, uh, he recognizes. They're exposed. You see, the only way evil can succeed is it has to disguise itself as good. And one of the best disguises, get ready, one of the best disguises for evil is religion. 
Just pretend to love God. Just go to church every Sunday. Just recite the creed. Say all the right things. And you can be racist. You can be against the poor. You can hate immigrants. You can be totally concerned about making money and being a materialist. But you go to church each Sunday. Do you understand? Now those are the things that prophets point out. And so prophets are nearly as popular as priests. Priests keep repeating uh, the party line. So yeah, no reason to fight them. But when you do both, you put together, frankly, to use our contemporary language, the best of the conservative with the best of the liberal. And no one likes them. Because <laughs> they're neither Republican nor Democrat. They, they honor the tradition, but they say, here's what's phony about the tradition, too. Now that's what a fully spiritually intelligent person can do. And I hope a gospel like this is respecting that. Now one other point. You might not have noticed it in the reading of the gospel, but it says twice, he taught as one having authority and not like their own scribes and teachers of the law. And then at the very end, all were amazed. What is this? A new teaching, but with authority. The normal way you proved you had authority was to quote the past. Uh, if you're a Protestant, you quote the scriptures. If you're Catholic, you quote the popes or the saints or the mystics. You know, they both have their strengths and their weaknesses. But here's a man, remember, Jesus is not a priest, he's not a formal prophet, and yet he's operating as both. He's a layman, a lay person, like all of you in this room. And that he stands up and speaks with his own inner authority. My experience says, mm, that's daring. Mm. Who of you? You know, here I am sitting and all, standing in all my vestments and ordination so I could get away with saying what I want to say. But if one of you came up here and said this, everybody would be grumbling, and who is she? Who is he? <laughs> well, that's what Jesus was doing. As a layman, he speaks, this is how I see God. Now, that's my final point. That's why it's difficult to be a prophet. Because a prophet is never ordained as such. Now, Pope Francis is, of course. But uh, usually they just say, this is my experience. Now, that can be true or that can be false. And that's what Mark's Gospel is talking about here. So, if he is speaking truth, if she is speaking truth to power, they're always critiquing power. Political power, economic power, governmental power. That's why all the prophets are killed. Because <laughs> they're not company men. So do you see how we're trying to hold both sides together? How can you honor the tradition and yet at the same time recognize when it's telling lies? I think you know where this is leading. We have a lot of need for some prophets in our government right now. When untruth takes over and lies are told as a regular operation, you know we need prophets who speak truth to power. But you can be pretty sure they're never going to be popular. They'll probably be jailed. <laughs> and oft times, at least in the Jewish tradition, they were killed. So don't pray to be a prophet, but we still need them now.